Welcome back. Vasopressors, as you know, this is type of medication that increase blood pressure in hypotensive patients. And to explain it um, in a practical way, I want you to just focus for a minute with me here. Uh, we have a source of water. And it's just to explain to you how these vasopressors work. We have a source of water. And then we have a pump here. This is the pump and we have a hose big hose then these small hoses going to three trees so the system works by having water into the pump and then the pump will in push this water into these hoses in order for this to work you have to have enough water and then the pump has to work and increase the pressure to a certain level it's called p1 and then p2 here so we have to increase p1 to be bigger than p2 and then push the water into the trees so for this system to work again you have to have enough water functioning pump functioning hoses functioning hoses means we should not have any blockage here that's one we should not have any leakage here in any hose of course and then the diameter of these hoses has to be meet certain criteria to maintain the pressure so that way we make sure that each tree will get the water it needs now as you see very essential for the system to work is to have water if everything here working fine right it's not gonna work if you don't have enough water and the water here represent the volume in the body blood water etc the intravascular volume without it nothing else will work that's why in hypotensive patients the first and most important step is to give adequate IV fluid resuscitation before thinking even of vasopressor the only exceptions if your patient having significant pulmonary edema whether cardiogenic or non-cardiogenic so don't forget this and jump onto vasopressors if they're not gonna work and if they're gonna work they're gonna work for a little while and then patient will deteriorate actually will become worse and then if you have enough volume enough water the pump and the pump here represent the heart right so the heart has to be functioning properly now the heart working 50% then or the pump you need to give it certain medication or augmentation to make it work up to maybe 75 percent and to compensate for the other 75 percent you may increase the frequency if this pump was working 10 times per minute you want to make it 15 per minutes so that to compensate for that and then you want to have intact you do not want to have blockage let's say a p a massive p can block the pulmonary artery it can cause shock so you want to get rid of that with thrombolytics or with a thrombectomy whatever also you don't want to have any leak which can happen in hemorrhage so for the hemorrhagic shock you have to fix the leak and give blood to compensate for this if you give just water or blood in this example is you're not going to fix it as long as there is some leak and the third thing you want to make sure the diameter of these hoses or these arteries right are in the appropriate diameter range to maintain the pressure so if this become really dilated here you know the pressure will decrease and the amount in, in the in the hose and the amount that arrive to this tree will be less so you need to maintain this diameter and that's how it works exactly with the body remember the volume you have to have water without it it's not gonna work the pump should be functioning and the are the hoses should be working this is the volume in the body intravascular volume this is the heart these are the arteries arterioles and capillaries and these end organs we'll apply this picture when we talk about vasopressors individually and when we talk about shocks and type of shocks afterward see you next lesson
Thanks for watching this video. Please subscribe to our channel and activate the notification bell so you get to see the videos as soon as they are released. Glad to have you on board.